Picture this. Canadian boy goes to Sweden, visits his friends he hasn't seen in a long time, goes to Stockholm, visit the place. It's beautiful. It's getting a little late. We're a bit tired. Let's go back home. Put on a movie. A horror movie, perhaps. That's nice. Wounds, you say? Oh, that sounds like a good time. Let's put it on. Spoiler alert, it wasn't a good time. This movie sucks balls. We jump up in this movie with a quote. He had whispered to him things about himself which he did not know. Things of which he had no concern. Blah, 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 blah. Joseph Conrad, Heart of Darkness. And I was like, oh, okay, is this movie based on a book? It is. Based on a book that's not this one. It's not Heart of Darkness. It's called The Visible Filth, which is a novella. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's odd to quote a book in a movie adaptation of a book. That's not the book that the movie is based on. But maybe that would be too weird. That'd be too, like, it would insist it's upon itself. You know what I mean? Oh, my fucking God, dude. Okay, so I have to watch this movie on a VPN because it's only available in France right now. <laughs> and that's great. The movie's about this guy here that owns this gross, shitty bar. And uh, he's stuck in some sort of, like, a triangle love... Well, uh, he's stuck in a love triangle with these two. Uh, he likes the girl. And she's with this guy. And tensions are high. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, he's upset because they love each other. And, um... I'm 100% sure that lady in the back is naked, straight up nude. That shirt comes off, you drink for free. Isn't that right, Mary? Damn right. Oh, okay, that explains it. Um, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Yeah, surely that's illegal, or like a violation. Like you, you I'm sure you can get like ticket, like surely your business license can be revoked. <laughs> My lady. So uh, the boyfriend here gets in the Garfunkel, uh, kerfuffle with uh, Eric here that we get introduced to, and he's clearly very violent. Noted. That's the actor from a uh, split. Ow! Yeah, yeah. Ah! At some point, a bunch of teenagers come in for a drink. Then a bar fight breaks down. You know, nothing too crazy. You know, that's what happens in bars. Dudes fight. Dudes settle their beef between men by fight <laughs> after the bar fight the bar battle i'll say the bar battle that shit was crazy the guy I forgot his name i don't know his name dude he finds a cell phone under a table from one of the teenagers that were recording the fight and then he takes it home then he gets home and he goes to his girlfriend in the bed in his shoes he does it in his shoes seriously dude after dirtying the bed he goes up and gets a little beer you know nothing like a beer to wind down after a night of drinking at the bar where you work after he sits down with his after work beer um he gets a message on the phone that he took that belongs to a teenager and the message pretty weird so bar guy tries to open the phone but the phone is locked with like a crazy password but mr barman <laughs> that doesn't stop him he's, he's sherlock holmes he looks at the smudgy ass greasy ass fingerprints on the phone and figures it out just like that hey it's me i'm editing the video right now and i just noticed that for some reason when he looks at the phone the first time is the cleanest screen you'd see in your entire life and then the next shot it's like the grossest i i, I figured i'd point that out the little inconsistency <laughs> anyways back to the video once he gets into the phone he lets them know that they forgot the phone at the bar despite how terrifying the messages above his message are <laughs> the first cockroach jump scare in fucking history <laughs> i wrote this down i wrote down 1350 cockroaches in his house too world's first cockroach jump scare i still got jump scared by it oh goodness Stop fucking man how sad you're like fighting for your life and the person on the other end of the line is not into it. You're just like, oh, please, it's with me. It's with me, please. I am not the owner of this phone. Stop contacting me. <laughs> That's so fucked up. You're going to make me burn the eggs.
dude, just by his interaction, I can tell the relationship's like failing so hard. Also, uh, that's the actress from a. Uh... I don't make love. I fuck hard. You don't. Trying to find out whose phone this is. Why should I not look? Am I gonna see something I don't want to see? No. Why do you know how to unlock it? The smudge marks on the screen. I'm not lying about the phone, Carrie. Okay, I believe you. She keeps like thinking that he's cheating and stuff like that. She feels like projecting, but at the same time, he's clearly to the girl at the bar. Then he drives his girlfriend to school and then where she meets her teacher and gives him a big old hug because, man, I miss the days of college when I would go to the school and uh, give my teacher a hug. Let's get spied on real quick. So after dropping his girlfriend uh, to her right, other right, boyfriend, so he went to the bar to, and, uh, you know, just to check in on the bar and the, on Eric that got stabbed right in the fucking face the night before. Jump, 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 jump. So after uh, visiting his buddy Eric and making sure everything was fine, he uh, goes out in this, the town and gets some food and he's still followed by the car. Oh my God. And then he gets food and ends up seeing the couple. They talk, there's some tension, whatever. Then he goes back home. What was that? So there's a ghost that went by the main character. Forgot. I don't know his name. I'm sure they've said it a bunch of times. I just don't care. So he looks around the place for his girlfriend and she's not home, probably banging her teacher. So he sits down and plays some video games until he gets a, a message on the teenager's phone asking how his friend Eric is doing. And they start sending more and more messages that get like somewhat like cryptic and like threatening as they go. And at one point, the curiosity gets the best of him. He just looks through the phone and looks at some pictures. He scrolls in the phone until he finds a picture of decapitated heads, one of them possibly belonging to the phone owners, the phone's owner, and one that's just like a gross, weird looking one. Ew. What are you looking at? Nothing. I thought you were gonna bring that to the police. Whose fucking phone is that? I told you, it's, just, it's some chick from the bar. One of the chicks from the bar? He shows her the phone after she kept asking for it, and then she sees the decapitated heads, and then she insists that he calls Garrett, the guy who the, the phone belongs to, uh, to see if he's okay, because he was begging for help, basically, right? So then he calls, and this happens. I'm gonna call the cops. Don't. Listen, don't. What are you doing? Then he sees her decapitated. I, I don't know. They both decide that he should bring the phone to the police station, so he does. And on the way there, he gets a text that says, Thanks for calling. You've been chosen. Need her phone back right behind you. And then the phone turns into a, a big bug with a bunch of cockroaches on it. And he throws the phone out, loses control, gets out of his car and looks crazy wiping nothing off of him because it's all in his head. Oh my God, dude. Then he gets to the police station where his friends work and then they bring him for questioning, basically. Blue lives matter. All lives matter. Trump, 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 Trump. <laughs> the main character guy tells his uh, cop buddies uh, what happened. But uh, since he doesn't have the phone anymore, they don't really take him seriously because he has no proof. So whatever, it's night shift at the bar. The main character is there. Girlie comes in and she's pissed at her boyfriend because they had a fight. Because he's being jealous of someone. I've also got an eight ball in my pocket. If you want to play. An eight ball? Is that like a euphemism for like the mm -hmm. penis? For maybe weed or something? What does it mean? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. They spend some time together, and after drinking and coking, they go on a drive. Don't do that. <laughs> this is so nice. Yeah. Hey. This is Febreze. <laughs> smells good in here now. Stop it. Stop it. Hey. His name is Will. 
That's his name. Oh my God. We figured it out, guys. The girl's clearly upset, so he drops her off at her place. After she's gone, he, re the guy, Will, 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 so then he receives pictures from his girlfriend, which are pretty creepy. I can't tell what's going on in them, but they're creepy. So he decides to go check on her. He gets home. His girlfriend's at the computer just staring at something. Carrie. You okay? Hi. What is that? Nothing. I found your phone on the floor. Did, did you send me a picture? No. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel foggy. Are you drunk? No, Will. I'm just really tired. Come on. Let's go to bed. Yeah, I'm also a bit tired when I uh, spend the whole night staring at the hole. Nothing like spending the night in staring at the hole, you know. Anyways, Will hears a noise in the closet, so he goes to check on it. There's another cockroach jump scare. Motherfuckers. So I called it a day and go to bed. And then as he uh, as he's falling asleep, he hears a noise. What what could it be? Oh. <laughs> that scared me, dude. Let's watch the scene. <laughs> Who the hell are you? Garrett? Hey man, I'm, I'm really sorry. I didn't help. I thought you were kidding around. Something came and possessed us. You called it into your home. Staring at you as you sleep. Don't turn your head to the bulging head, dude. That's disgusting. So he sees a weird eye, then he wakes up, all sweaty, and he goes to the, the kitchen, and it's like nothing happened, there's no blood, no teeth, and since he's all sweaty, he's like, I'm gonna go take a shower. Fucking disgusting, dude. Any news from Dwayne? I told you they'd call if they heard anything. Well, what was his reaction when you showed him the pictures? I don't know. He was shocked. I don't understand how blasé you are about all this. Well, you didn't even want to bring it to the cops in the first place. God. Fuck this. People look so normal on the outside. What are you talking about? But on the inside, it's all just worms. What? What is this? Well, she could have said cockroaches. It would have made more sense, I feel like. But so after this weird thing, he decides to go check on his laptop and see what she's been up to. Why was she staring at a hole? You know, what's going on? He ends up finding information about a ritual. The ritual, I think, that the Garrett was talking about, about some wounds and stuff like that. So alleged teachings of the use of a wound to transcend physical boundaries and connect with higher beings for power and enlightenment. So after finding all this stuff, he, uh... This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. <laughs> he goes to his shift at the bar as usual and jeffrey's being mean or whatever jeffrey's the boyfriend they probably found out they kissed or something hey bartender 
Bring me another beer. I just brought you one, man. That one's empty. You should get him the fuck out of here. Pick that shit up, bartender. You're not a fucking tough guy, Jeffrey. Quit fucking acting like one. Calm down, Will. Hey, Alicia, I'll call you later. Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Hey, Jeffrey. you got a problem with him? I thought we were friends. Yeah, we are friends, Jeffrey. I'm going to get the fuck over here so I can give you a hug. What's the matter with you, you fucking <laughs> prick? Hey, don't talk to him. Talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> this interaction was so funny, dude. Both both ends were funny. After the altercation, you know, he goes and sees some cockroach go into a hole, and then he sees the hole, and then he gets like and there's an eye or something. I don't know. So after his little moment there with the hole, he gets a text from his girlfriend Carrie. Carrie's her name. Just uh, I put that out there. And uh, she gives the same type of message as Garrett did. Something's here with me, and then. A creepy picture that comes with, say, again, he rushes home to go see what's up. Carrie! Fuck. Is there no one in here? Oh, did you see that? <laughs> and he finds her again on the computer watching the hole. She's looking quite pale and honestly quite ill. And she's pissing herself. That's not good. He makes sure no one's home and stuff. Then he sits on the bed and he kind of looks like the guy in the picture that she, she took. What does that mean? I don't know. Then he gets a call from what seems to be a hell itself. He cries a little bit and picks up his pissy girlfriend and puts her on the bed sheets, the same bed sheets where he put his shoes on. They really don't give a fuck about their bed sheets, clearly. He drops her in the bath and then the, sh the water turns black and then she comes out and she's fine. And then he gets a call from uh, Dwayne. Telling him that he got the bar covered for him, but that Eric wants to see him. Eric is, uh, drop, drop, you know? I said Eric called down, asking for you. He said something about giving you a present. So the next... Sorry. <laughs> so the next morning after that, they talk during breakfast. They have a nice little friendly talk. I think we should break up. Okay. That's all you got? Why are you acting offended? You're breaking up with me. I can't believe how calmly you're taking this whole thing. I guess you can probably find a place to crash. Well, already? What did you expect? That we cuddle? Fuck you. You know what I think you want? Nothing. You are a mock person. You're just a body. Chill, man. You're not just a body. You're a host for the worms and the cockroaches. So he goes to the bar to have a drink because he's upset. And he remembers, all right, Eric wanted me to visit him. So he pays, a, he pays him a visit. He goes up to Eric. He's not looking so good. He asks him if he can crash at his place because, you know, they broke up. I gotta stay on your couch for a day or two. No. I'm up against a wall, man. No! Oh, yeah. So he stays anyways. So after a while, Eric gets up. He's upset. He tells him to get out. They had a little fight. His face is looking really fucking gross. Then he throws Eric on the bed and asks him where his present is. And then he finds the phone with a weird text about Eric being the wrapping of the present. Then he says this weird shit. Are you the wrapping? I will rip you open while you're still alive. Will dials a number for, for hell. And then all these cockroaches come out of every fucking orifice in the house. Then Eric starts screaming and then suddenly... <laughs> So he eats the face baby and then the end you might think i edited this together to look funny i didn't this is the end of the movie so what bothered me about this movie there's a few things i'd love an explanation for there's like the ghosts that we keep seeing there's a decapitated heads there's the ritual they're talking about like who started it how did they get transferred? Then the bath water thing that turned black that she could have sold online. And then why is everything about roaches and stuff? If at the end, it's like a weird little baby, like baby face eye thing. Like, uh. so yeah, I was very confused by this movie. And uh, I think apparently the book is much better. I don't doubt it. But I don't know why you you go ahead and make a movie out of it if it's barely going to cover anything. Anyways, I've been me. You've been you. Bye-bye.